You've got to tune to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle, online round the world at KEXP.org. And someone we don't see often enough but love to death, Andrew Bird, live in studio. Welcome. Thank you. And you've got some merry men with you. I love when bands play in the round. It always mm -hmm. sounds so awesome. Yeah, we're doing it old time It style. takes takes some talent to make that sound good, and I already know from the sound check it sounds great. So how about you start off with a couple songs? Sure. This is called Give It Away. live on KEXP tonight playing at the Paramount with Laura Marling and we're so grateful that you've made time to come in with your band. You want to do a little round of introductions? Sure. Uh, on guitar we have Jeremy Ilvesaka. Um, 
from Minneapolis. Also from Minneapolis is Martin Dosh on drums, and then our newest member is Alan Hampton playing bass. Welcome. You all sound extraordinary playing together. And songs from the new album, Break It Yourself, mm -hmm. which also is extraordinary. And you are such a prolific writer. It seems like you're just uh, putting out um, so much great music. And even when you're sort of proper albums aren't out, you're putting out things um, in between. I know you've been working on some soundtracks. Um, mm -hmm. You had a song covered by Walter in the Muppet movie. Uh -huh. and then, of course, Norman. And um, tell me a little bit about um, what's been going on for you since we last saw you live on the air was when Noble Beast came out. You were live in Austin um, in 2009. Mm -hmm. So it just seems like it's overwhelming, um, everything that you've been doing since then. Yeah, I actually took an unprecedented break but for, for me, that doesn't mean stop making music, of course. And so I did all these little projects that kind of helped exercise, you know, my impulses, but without having to put out a record out and tour on it and everything. So uh, it was kind of just the perfect amount of creative stuff. You're sort of a, um, such a, not sort of, you are an incredible craftsman when it comes to songwriting. In fact, you even elucidate quite a bit on the songwriting process. I know you've written, I don't know if you still are, for the New York Times blog, Measure for Measure, where you talk about your songwriting process. Mm -hmm. And even your Fingerlings projects kind of show um, a song in its creation process. Do you always sort of... Um, write songs in the same way. I, I understand from talking to you before and reading that your songs are something that take years sometimes to come to creation. Yeah, and they, and they keep evolving even after the record comes out. It's just kind of a, it's more about the commitment to the live performance and in order to keep the live performance fresh, you need to rethink your songs uh, every couple of shows and like turn them inside out or sometimes a new, um, you know, um, idea will occur to you, and even though it's not on the record, you think, well, I'll, I just think of the song, I boil them, the songs down to like their basic, you know, elements, and then they can grow again into new things. Do, um, tell me what the recording process is like, especially for this beautiful new album. I heard that you record in your barn. Yeah, it wasn't a whole lot different than what we're doing right here. Um, we were a little more plugged in, but um, it was pretty... Uh, pretty basic. We had seven tracks to record to tape and did the whole band with seven tracks in one room with no separation between the musicians and uh, and we just it yielded a different kind of record because it's a more of a performance than a than a construction, you know. I would imagine that there's sort of a tension in the form of electricity doing it live like that, but is it a relaxed process or does it feel kind of tensed? If if we were, uh, no, it, compared to how I usually am in the studio, I think, I don't know if these guys would agree, but I was fairly relaxed. And it's because we weren't really trying to make a record. We were just getting together to learn these songs mm -hmm. and roll tape. And somehow that was, that was the key to trick yourself into making a, a record that way. You've kind of mixed it up over the years and done a lot of different ways. Of course, you have a classical background, and then you played in a band format for years, and then for several years kind of did the solo thing. And mm -hmm. you've been playing with some of these musicians now for quite a few years and several records. Is mm -hmm. that a different process than in songwriting or in the studio? Um, it was the same process until the band got there, and then there was a lot more input from, from the, the band as we were kind of going with everyone's first impulses and first ideas, which are usually um, a little a little odd, <laughs> you know, the first idea is it never had a chance to get normalized. Um, so there's really interesting bass lines and, and uh, little mistakes, and you can hear us kind of feeling our way through the dark in the songs, and that's kind of what gives it uh, a nice asymmetrical quality. There's always a tension, I feel like, in your songs, and I notice that the tempo changes throughout the songs, which is not something that you hear in a lot of albums. Yeah, because it's not on a grid, and a lot of records are made on a on a grid um, where everything gets lined up to the nearest, you know, uh, post. But it's uh, it, and I I just, I mean, sometimes it's intentional. Sometimes it's just the way. That's just what, what happens in live music, you know. Um, there's no click. There's no nothing fixing it. So it's um, it shouldn't be that unusual, but it it kind of is. 
Well, that must keep it fun and exciting. And you, as you said, it's different almost every time you perform it. Of course, mm-hmm. the bare bones of the songs are mm-hmm. there, certainly. But mm-hmm. uh, well, it's so fun to have you here sure. today. Yeah. And uh, the album Break It Yourself is incredible. And we'd love to hear some more music. Sure. This is Andrew called, Bird. Uh, Dance Caribe. Mistaking clouds for mountains all torn to me. Here we 
ago mistaking clouds for mountains of autonomy. Even tuning sounds gorgeous. <laughs> uh, all right, should we do another? We'd love it. Sandrew Bird live on KEXP. This one's called Orpheo Looks Back. So beautiful. It's Andrew Bird live on KEXP, the new song, Break It Yourself, and playing songs from that today. We appreciate mm -hmm. that. It sounds great. Thanks. And tonight you play at the Paramount Theater with Laura Marling. Mm -hmm. And nearly every time I've seen you perform live, in addition to the musicians, there's always something visually um, arresting on the stage. One time it was an old-timey gramophone that was spinning, and now I noticed in the middle of your song that you have a little sock monkey doppelganger. Oh, over yeah. here, wearing a red and white pinstripe suit and tie and a little pair of Chuck Taylor high tops. Yeah. Is he going to be on stage tonight? 
he's always on stage. It's just became sort of superstitious. He's a little creepy sometimes, but it's a, it's just something that we. If he's not there, you're like, why? What's not? Something's not right. All right. And then you turn around and. Okay. I'm glad you told me that because he's so adorable. I was going to try and steal him, but I wouldn't want to <laughs> throw you off tonight. No, that would be um, <laughs> catastrophic. If you well, thank you all so much for coming in. It's always such a delight to see you and even more to see you perform. Well, thanks for having us. Andrew Bird live on KEXP Seattle. T, D, four. <laughs> yourself Definitely wouldn't have wanted to miss that one. Eye on eye from the new album, Break It Yourself. You sure I can't talk you into staying and playing the rest of the record? <laughs> <laughs> Probably could. <laughs> Tonight at the Paramount. Again, thank you so much. It's great to see you. Thank you. Andrew Bird, live on KEXP Seattle.